tell us um, how we made it. Hi, my name is Larry Berry. I'm from a little town called Valcarin, which is in the great city of Siberia. And I was born and raised here, and I still live here in Siberia. What kind of music did you listen to growing up? Were there any particular artists that inspired you? I was kind of, uh, they say, the black sheep of the family of music in general because when I started growing up, my parents weren't into country music or my friends weren't into country music. But for some reason, I got, grew up listening to, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Cash in Alabama, who were two of my big, big incentives, my big idols in country music. I watched uh, The Dukes of Hazards, which was one of my big, biggest shows that I really enjoyed, Smokey the Bandit, Cannonball Con. And uh, as a, when, I was, when I was younger, I wanted to be full time, I wanted to be a cowboy and a truck driver. Uh, and that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to have a girlfriend, I didn't want to get married, I just wanted to be this cowboy, live on a ranch, and drive trucks from coast to coast. That changed a little bit. Larry, you're starting to get recognized around Sudbury, like at the grocery store and the, the, the malls and other venues. Tell us about that and what it feels like to be recognized. I think I get recognized a little bit more outside of my hometown. Because uh, in, in the greater city of Sudbury, we're still, we have so many small communities all around, and we're still very small community uh, type people, and, and I like that, and I like how close everybody is here in Sudbury. And when we go to the grocery store, people will pump me up, and I think it'll either be uh, from parents, even down to kids that will recognize us. You know, that's very very old. To me, I'm just, I'll wear a ball cap on the weekends, and just, I'm just the same old guy that, you know, is on stage, or they're holding up for Brooks and Dunn, or doing a big concert somewhere. Uh, I'm still the same guy, so when I do get recognized, I think I'm very, very humble and I'm, I'm really excited to meet the people that they've recognized me. Uh, but I like to hear their stories and you know why they recognize me, whether it's from my album or a show that I've done or a charity thing that I've done. But I think uh, mostly it's just being proud that I'm from Sudbury. I saw your CD in the store the other day. How does it make you feel that your CD's out there now in your own community and outside of your community? Seeing my CD's on a, on a shelf is really cool. Uh, I'm the type of person where I'll go into a Walmart and I'll specifically look into the country section to see if my CDs are there. And if they are, I'm, I'm tickled pink. I just think it's the coolest thing uh, to see my CDs into stores. If I hear my song on the radio, um, I will turn it up. And I've heard my song many times. And I think a lot of times uh, I like to hear the, the DJ's comments afterwards, what they say after the particular song. And especially traveling across the province of Ontario, if I hear my song being aired on the radio, a lot of them will refer to me. That was Larry Barrio from Sudbury, Ontario, which is kind of cool. And it, it rhymes, and that's how I come up with my whole uh, license plate idea that uh, I am on proud of Larry Barrio from Sudbury, Ontario. If you were to break out into a song right now, which one would it be? If I were to have an acoustic guitar with me right now, I believe I'd probably play Dixieland, like, which is the first song I've ever learned how to play acoustically on uh, my guitar. It's a song by Alabama. And if I had another one, it would probably be Boots or Hearts by the Tragic Lego. Great. Success takes a lot of dedication and support. Tell me a little bit about the support you've received from the city, not just from those at Tom Davies Square, but the community at large. The city support has been incredible. Uh, when I first started my career, and this is beyond even writing a song about Sudbury, that I was so well received in my hometown. I've been doing this for yeah. over 12 years now full time, and just the support of people saying, you know what, you're you're still at it, you're still a hard go-getter, and you know you, you truly believe in your dream, and we are so supportive of you and what you're doing. I think probably the biggest highlight that I've had in my career so far is having a standing ovation when I opened up the books and done at the Sudbury Arena from my home crowd. Uh, I still get goosebumps, I'm full of goosebumps right now just thinking about it. And that's the type of stuff that I'm, that I'm so proud about, being from a community that really supports your home. And that's, that's huge to me, like you can't, you can't put a price tag on that. Most artists are shying away from YouTube, but you're not. You're really front and center. Tell us why you've taken this approach. The YouTube thing is, is kind of touch and go, same with downloading music. And today's technology, you can download music on your telephone, you can watch YouTube on your telephone, which is technology is just increasingly uh, becoming you know, more and more advanced every single day. The reason for putting my video and the making of the video on YouTube is that, first of all, with my sponsors and the, the Greater City of Sudbury and all the sponsors that I've got involved with the video, we literally own the video of Rocktown and Larry Barry on the making of the video. And a lot of people work during the daytime and don't really get a chance to uh, necessarily watch CMT in the evening or maybe people that really don't watch country music. So I want it to be available. If you go to my website, LarryVario.com, that you would actually, there would be a link to YouTube and you can actually see the video. Because I don't want to be limited just to people that listen and watch country music. I want this open because this is a video about our hometown. This is a video about mining. It's a video about our mining heritage. 
and it's something that I'm really proud about and I think that's the reason why we put it on YouTube is because we just don't want to centralize it just to certain listeners. Social media is really important and besides YouTube, there's also people that are using Twitter. Do you tweet? I don't. <laughs> I'm very, very simple. I'm with my phone. Uh, I remember years ago when I had a Palm Pilot and I was out west in, in Alberta and they said, a cowboy with a Palm Pilot, where's you know technology bringing us to them? Um, but uh, I don't tweet, I got a Blackberry and I do 90% of my stuff is through email and I'll check Facebook, but that's about it. I don't want to get any more beyond that. Hopefully I don't need to be. Maybe in two years from now we'll talk and I'll be a tweeting monster, I don't know, but right now, no I don't. Your latest release, Rock Town, part of it was filmed underground. What was it like to play underground? I've been underground before as a guest. I went to Creighton Mine. I went to over 9,000 feet underground with my uncle and my dad. Uh, I was uh, invited through Inco at the time to go and visit their mines. And that was pretty spectacular. But to be able to play underground, it felt kind of surreal because I realized that you know people are wearing hard hats and steel toe boots and you know the, the lights and you know uh, being underground. Having that opportunity to be in a designated safe area that we were allowed to film uh, and perform this, it was pretty, it was, it was beyond my expectations because the song means so much to me and Subway means so much to me and mining means a lot to me. Even though I've never mined a day in my life, my dad's a retired miner, my uncle's a miner, my friends and neighbors. And so to me, to be able to sing a song that I wrote about mining and I'm literally singing it in a mine, that was pretty cool. Your video is now on CMT. What was that like for the first time for you to see your video on CMT? And do you watch it all the time? I watch CMT all the time. I watch it all the time as much as I can. And I cross my fingers you know, to see the video. And every time I see it, I, I get full of goosebumps and I get so excited. I'll go and crank up the TV and I, and I want to see uh, you know, the full video and the credits at the end of it. And to see who played before me. So it might be Keith Urban, it might be Brad Paisley. Uh, so to be involved in those types of videos is really incredible. The first time I seen my video, we were on a cross Ontario radio tour and we were in Ottawa and I was with my wife and my two lovely girls and we were in the Lone Star Cafe in Ottawa and I asked them specifically if they could put it on CMT because they said my video would be aired at 12.30 in the afternoon and sure enough it did and I'll tell you what the thrill it was to finally see my video on CMT. I've got a real trivial question for you. Which boot do you put on first every morning? I would say the left boot first. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> but I told you as I'm just thinking about that, yeah, I'd say probably the left boot. <laughs> Where do you hang your hat at night? My hat always hangs at the entrance of our house. When we walk into our house, we can either go upstairs or downstairs, and right in the middle of the post, my cowboy hat is hung there, and that's where it stays all the time. Larry, any last words for your fans, not just in greater Sudbury, but everywhere that's watching? I would say uh, that I'm... Wow, an interesting question to bring up. <laughs> that was um, so. What fans remember me from? I'm an entertainer. I love to entertain. I like to be. I'm a people person. I like to be with people. I like to uh, get out. I, if I can speak with somebody, and if somebody's got some comments for me, I love to hear them. And I, I really, really thrive on my fans. And I and I kind of feel weird calling people my fans because fans are usually people that look up to somebody because they either feel like they're, that somebody is greater than them and, and, I, and I've really always been uncomfortable kind of having, using the word fans and I prefer to use friends. Uh, so when people come up and see me and they're saying, you know, they're fans of mine, they're friends of mine. Because uh, if they enjoy my music and they enjoy Larry Burial, me as, as a person in my show, that really is the best. One last question. Your Rocktown uh, CD is circulating throughout the community and, and is available in stores. What's next for Larry Berry? We're going to release another video off of my album, which uh, we're just debating on which song we're going to release next. And then I'm off back to Nashville again to do some writing with uh, a good friend of mine, Gil Brand, which is uh, from Sudbury also. And we're going to work on another album, which I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. And I want to be more involved. The last album, I have co written three songs and co produced my entire album. And this next album, I want to co write more songs off of the album. And I want to be again uh, you know, involved in the whole producer of the album itself again. So Larry Berry is not going to be around for still a long time. Thanks, Larry. Thank you.